asymmetrical waveforms. If you've ever opened up your DAW and seen a waveform like this, you've run into an asymmetrical waveform. What causes them? Are they a problem? And if they are a problem, what do you need to do to fix them? Well, those answers are ahead. I'm Keith from no label, no producer, no limits.com. Let's dive right in. When I make a noise with the mouth hole on the front of my face, or any acoustic instrument really, it creates waves of alternating high and low pressure. And those waves travel outward in all directions at over a thousand kilometers per hour. Now this microphone, it has an element in it and it reacts to those high and low pressure waves. If we imagine this receipt is a microphone element, as you can imagine that if there's low pressure here and high pressure here, the receipt, the element of the microphone will get pushed this way. And then as the high pressure wave comes and hit it, hits it, it'll get pushed this way. So therefore the element vibrates back and forth like this. Ooh. And it creates positive and negative voltage, which gets recorded in your DAW and then gets represented visually in a waveform. But you know what else can move this receipt? Air. Especially if I sustain a breath. That's going to create a force just this way until I stop. And what's that going to create in terms of a waveform on your DAW? Lumpy, asymmetrical audio. I've taken the pop filter off of my microphone and let's see if we get asymmetry if I blow into the microphone. These have some element of asymmetry here. You can see there's a long while before this audio goes above the zero line. When I hit it a little harder, there's more. Again, a long stretch before I go above the zero line and here too. And as well here, I'm above the zero line for quite a long time. So obviously blowing into a microphone can create asymmetry. And the same with plosive P's and B's and D's. And how do we fix that? Well, obviously with a pop filter or something of this nature, which blocks the flow of air, but lets the sound through. Now, most of this energy that is causing the asymmetry is very low. So we could probably put an EQ on there and reduce it. So let's put a high pass filter here at 100 hertz. That will probably be fine. And just to see what it looks like, if it's more symmetrical, we will render it. And you can see that's much more symmetrical with those low frequencies taken out. But many instruments can create a bias this way. A trumpet or a trombone can create a shock wave that comes out and pushes the element of the microphone one way. A violin is bowed up one way and down the other. And a harmonica, sometimes you blow through it. And like your Uncle Morty says, sometimes you suck. <laughs> So these all have the potential to create an asymmetrical sound wave. And in these cases, except for the breath of air, the plosives of Peter Piper, they're a feature, not a bug. It's just the way sound is. But there are more ways to create asymmetrical waveforms, including harmonics. When you play a single note on an instrument or sing a single note, mostly you hear one note, the root note, the fundamental frequency. However, other notes also ring. Some of them are called harmonics. Let me demonstrate. La. Okay, take a look at this note right here. So I sang right at around 200 hertz, and that's the fundamental note that you hear. But up at about 400 hertz, we should have another one. And then another multiple would be 600 hertz. And there we have it, and then 800 and then a thousand, and so on. So this is the fundamental note, or the first order harmonic, second order harmonic, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. And the amount of fundamental frequency compared to the various harmonics is one of the things that gives instruments their distinctive sound. It's the tone part of the sound. Now, what does this have to do with asymmetrical waveforms? Well, let me demonstrate with the sine waves. 
Okay, I've recorded a sine wave at 110 hertz. Now a sine wave is a nice, smooth, symmetrical waveform. Every trough is followed by a corresponding and equal peak all the way down the line. Now I'm going to add a third order harmonic at 330 hertz and a fifth order harmonic at 550 hertz. And we can see all three of those sound waves superimposed here where I've created a bus and run them all together. And as you can see, right here they're in sync. They're all three below the zero line. And right here, they're also in sync, all three above the zero line. But right here, we have one high and one low, and one kind of in the middle. They're going to cancel each other out somewhat. So we have both constructive and destructive phase if we add these together. Let's see what it looks like if I make a wave file out of it. Here's what we've got. It is symmetrical, but not quite in the same way. This valley is not immediately followed by a peak, but the peak does come later. So it is very symmetrical. If we go to the end of the file, we can see the zero line here, and this definitely goes up and down in equal amounts right around the zero line. That's symmetrical. Okay, let's delete this wave file and get back to where we were. Now I'm going to unmute my second order harmonic and my fourth order harmonic. So I have 110, 220, 330, A440, and 550. And let's see how those combine up here. This is interesting. They're in sync at this point and at this point but I don't see any area where they are in sync in the other direction. So here we have one, two, three waves to the downside and two waves to the upside. So once again, we're going to have some destructive interference going on. So this looks to me like we're going to be biased to the upside once we added those second and fourth harmonics. Let's create a wave file, a render, and see. Now looky there, you can see it's obviously asymmetrical. Now it looks to me as if we're spending more time below the zero point and less time above the zero point, but the peaks are much higher here. So this may be symmetrical in terms of energy, I don't know. But in terms of headroom, it's not. If I wanted to turn this signal up, I don't have any room. But if we lowered this all down, I would have more headroom. And so that's one reason you might want to correct asymmetrical waveforms is to get your headroom back. Typically, though, you don't need to. We've created an asymmetrical waveform because we've added second and fourth harmonics. Now, if I were to move these wave files and render it again, get them a little bit out of sync with each other in terms of not starting in the same place, we would have more symmetry. But the rule that you can take away from this is that the higher the content in the second and fourth harmonics, the more likely you are to have asymmetry in your waveforms. A trumpet, for instance, has much more of the second and fourth order harmonics than a clarinet. It's just part of the tone of a trumpet. So what do we do about this, if anything? This is more of a metaphor than an explanation, but imagine that your audio signal is this cap, and the black line is the zero line, and we've got more above the zero line than below the zero line. Well, what we might want to do is use a phase rotator plug-in and rotate the phase on this audio signal until we have about equivalent amounts above and below the zero line. And that way, we might get our headroom back. Let's take a look at how this works. So let's take a phase rotator plug-in and put it on this sound wave and see what we can do. I'm going to add a new track here and drag it up and let's just put this track in it as a master and we're going to add a phase rotator plug-in. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and render it. So now what we've done is we have sent this track to this track and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees and render it. And looky there, we have fixed the asymmetry, but let's see if it sounds any different. Let's take a listen. 
How about this one? Those sound any different to you? They sound the same, but this one we've gotten our headroom back. So that's one thing that you can do if you have an asymmetrical waveform and you are lacking in headroom. You can try a phase rotation plug-in, try various settings, and see if you can get your headroom back. Now it's not much headroom. You can see we have a little space here before the top of the potential waveform. And right here we have really almost no space. So there we've used a phase rotation plug-in. If you go into any audio forum or Facebook group and you mention asymmetrical waveforms, one phrase will come up over and over again. And it's usually wrong. What's that phrase? DC offset. Now we use alternating current and alternating current goes up and down above and below a zero line. And so does our audio waveform. But direct current is more like a straight line. So what happens if direct current strays into our audio signal? Well, the audio signal rides on that straight line. Now, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this. This is what it looks like when you have DC offset. You see the center line of the audio here where it gets quiet is up here, but the zero line is down here. It's as if this sound wave is riding on a direct current. And in fact, that's what's happening. Now this is rare. I've been working on DAWs since about 1991 and I don't think I've ever seen it. I had to artificially create this one. But here's how you fix it. You use a DC offset filter. Now I turned this one on and rendered the track and here's what I got. I got this sound wave. Now this sound wave is properly centered. Let's take a listen to these two and see if we can hear the difference. Check one, check two, check three. Check one, check two, check three. Now you can hear that little kunk pop when I stop the playback head here. And that is another sign that it could be DC offset. On this file, if I stop, you don't hear it. Check one, check two, check three. Here you hear it. Check one, check two, check three. Now, DC offset is typically caused by defective equipment. There are some poorly designed sound cards that might introduce a little bit of DC current into your audio path. I rarely see it. So if somebody comes in and says, oh, DC offset is your problem, and your waveform doesn't look like this, well, tell them Uncle Keith said you're wrong. Surely we've exhausted every possible way asymmetrical waveforms are created, right? No, we haven't and stop calling me Shirley. I've created this synth bass track. Let's see what that waveform looks like. Nice and symmetrical. Okay, let's get back to where we were. Now, let's say I'm concerned about the amount of sub bass, the ultra low frequencies, 20 or 30 hertz. So I decided to put a high pass filter on this synth bass to take care of it. So I pull up the stock EQ in Reaper, re-EQ, and I put it in high pass mode, and my cutoff frequency is a little under 30 hertz. I'll just show you what that looks like if I move the frequency up. It rolls off the low end, so back to 27 hertz. Okay, great, now I've taken care of my low end problem. Let's take a look at what that does to the waveform. Whoopsie daisy. It's a little lopsided now. And usually, lopsided waveforms are not a problem. But think of it this way. Look at how much closer this low tip is to the distortion line. So if I put a limiter or a compressor on this track, the bottom parts of the waveform are going to kick in on the limiter sooner than the tops will. So my limiter is going to have to work a little harder than if the waveform were symmetrical. So. Now I've heard that shelves work better than high pass filters for this kind of thing. So let's change it to a shelf. Okay, same corner frequency. Make it a little steeper and we've got about the same result. A shelf looks a little different, I'll show you here. It just lowers the specified amount and keeps going. We'll go back down to about 30 hertz. Okay, 
That should take care of our problem, right? Let's render it out and see what happens. Uh-oh. Still asymmetrical. Hmm. What can we do? Well, there are two potential solutions. One, let's go back to our phase rotator plugin. And let's rotate it about 10 degrees in the positive direction. 11 is close enough. And let's render that and see what that does. OK, we have a more symmetrical waveform. So we can phase rotate it. Another way would be to use a linear phase EQ, which creates less problems in the realm of asymmetrical waveforms. I've got reefer here. Uh, that's right, reefer. And uh, as long as this box is unchecked, it operates in linear phase mode. And you can see I've just dropped it off at about 23 hertz. Let's bring it up to uh, 29 hertz and pulled it down close to 30 dB here. Let's turn it on and let's see what happens when we create our waveform. And lo and behold, we have a much more symmetrical waveform with a linear phase EQ. So if you're messing with the low end in terms of high passing or shelving or EQing, check the waveform and make sure you're not eating up too much of the headroom. Two solutions, phase rotation and linear phase EQs. Now, my suspicion is that other kinds of EQ create asymmetrical waveforms in other frequency areas. But higher frequency waveforms are so much smaller, so having a little asymmetry there doesn't really cause any problem in terms of eating up headroom. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me in the comments. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe, comment, like, share. It helps me keep the channel going. And as always, there's a link below to a web page that has much more information on this subject, asymmetrical waveforms. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. It's Keith from no label, no producer, no limits.com. Bye bye. <music>